For those of you who do not want to read this giant wall of text, here's the short version. This video is made for fun using an amateur setup. So remember, viewer discretion is advised. This is the Kingdom Hearts story so far as I know it from my experience playing the games. Let's start way back at the beginning with Unchained Key, where keyblades were probably the most common thing next to zippers and belts in Final Fantasy games. Well, everyone had keyblades and it was really nice and happy, then the darkness started to appear. So keyblade wielders weren't have to deal with the darkness. Well, the darkness kept growing and it ended up getting to the point where the keyblade wielders ended up deciding, let's have a war. I don't know why they decided to have a war, but they decided, let's have a war. So they all went off to a planet and apparently all died there and left their keyblades there and created the keyblade graveyard, which is a really nice thing to see. It's creepy. Well, let's fast forward time a bit and go to Birth by Sleep. Well, in Birth by Sleep, we end up learning about this kid by the name of Ventus, who his heart has been dropped into darkness because it was torn apart. Well, his heart reached out to another person's heart, a little boy by the name of Sora, and it lends him some of his light. So he's able to kind of function again. Takes a little bit to get back up to full working shape, but he's able to function, and he is found by a guy by the name of Ericus, who is a really nice Keyblade Master, who is currently training Terra and Aqua, two really nice Keyblade wielders. Well, Ventus grows up with them and learns how to use the Keyblade. Then, Terra and Aqua, they have their Keyblade Master Test, with Ericus and a guy by the name of Xehanort, who is definitely not evil, as proctors. Well, Aqua passes. Terra doesn't, because Erica says, I sense darkness within his heart. And then Xehanort goes, ah, don't listen to him. I'll train you to control that darkness and use it. Totally not evil. I am not going to try to possess your body anytime soon. So Terra decides, okay, yeah, no, I'll listen to this guy. He seems totally legit. So he ends up flying off. He's like, I need to go train and become my own person and become a true Keyblade Master with Xehanort, because he cares about me. And then it's like, my friend. And Aqua's like, where are you guys going? Where? Why? And she chases off after them. Well, they are exploring around, and while they're exploring around, they keep bringing it to the people. They end up going to Radiant Garden, a really nice place, and it's full of a lot of people who look kind of familiar if you played the other games. And then Aqua meets this little girl by the name of Kyrie, and it's like, you're a really nice little girl. Here, I will give you a little blessing. Blesses her, and basically gives her keyblade powers. But not really. Kind of. Yes. No. Maybe. Who knows? I don't know. Well, during this time, Ventus and Terra, they end up finding this place called Destiny Islands. They land there. Terra ends up meeting this little white-haired boy. And he's all like, oh, yeah, no, you need to show your strength. And, yada, 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 and basically blesses him with keyblade powers. Kind of. I don't know. Maybe? Not really. I don't know. The little kid's name is Riku, by the way. And then Ventus ends up meeting this little boy. Name Sora. And he's like, I'll oh, bless you, too. Boom. More keyblade powers. Everyone's happy, handing off Keyblade powers everywhere, but not really. Yes? No? I don't know. It's kind of weird and convoluted. Did they even meet? I don't know. Then they fly off, they go around, and Ventus starts running into this guy named Vanitas. And he's like, who's this Vanitas guy? He's really weird. He seems kind of familiar. And he learns Vanitas is the darkness that was sheared from his heart, and that was the reason he was in that coma. And he was, the darkness was sheared off by Xehanort. Well, Xehanort turns out to be really evil. Who would have guessed? Not me. Especially not when he totally looks like an evil dark elf. Not evil. Yeah. Well, he ends up learning that he was supposed to fight Vanitas and create the Keyblade. Not K-E-Y. Key as in the giant X from that one previous game, Unchained Key. It's apparently the super magical, super powerful Keyblade. So Xehanort wants him to fight Vanitas and then fuse into one, basically, and create the Keyblade. Well, he's also been using Terra this entire time while dropping his seeds of darkness in, at other people's feet to turn Terra into a new host for his body so he can continue on and spread his darkness and turn Terra into a new vessel. And so Ventus and Terra both end up at the Keyblade Graveyard. And Aqua ends up there too because he's trying to stop all this stuff from going down. So Aqua goes there and Ventus and Vanitas fight and they fuse and they make the Keyblade, but still somewhat imperfect. So it needs to be full of control because Ventus is just that fighting from the inside. And Aqua fights this new Vanitas and ends up beating him while Ventus beats him from the inside. So they end up freeing himself. And Terra has to fight Xehanort to keep control of his body, but Xehanort takes over and Terra's heart is pushed into his armor. So Terra's armor fights his old body and knocks it for a real loop. So his body ends up waking up in Radiant Garden with amnesia. But the only thing he can remember is, my name must be Xehanort. I have to be Xehanort. I can't be this kid named Terra that I look very much like, except for the fact that I have white hair. Totally not Terra. 
Well, during this time, Ventus has fallen into a coma because his heart was broken apart again and other things happen. So Aqua ends up taking his body back to their home world and ends up putting him in a castle and activating a failsafe, which turns into this giant castle that's supposed to help keep people out from this one secret room that she stored Ventus's body in. And the castle's name is Castle Oblivion. It takes away a lot of stuff, especially memories. It takes away what's most important to you. Well, instead of staying there safe, waiting for Ventus to wake up, she decides, I need to go off into the realm of darkness to help pull back Terra's heart. She gets lost. Royally lost. Completely lost. For a long time. But she managed to keep herself together for quite a while. Well, let's fast forward a bit to Kingdom Hearts 1, where we have Riku, Roxas. No, we don't have Roxas. We have Riku, Sora, and Kairi. Roxas is later. Riku, Sora, Kairi, they're all on island, Destiny Island. They're like, let's go explore the world. I want to see other worlds. Okay. And then darkness starts to swallow their world. And Sora ends up learning about the Keyblade. It's the thing that he can use. He's like, oh, I have a weapon that can fight this darkness that's attacking us. And then Kairi's all like, Sora. And she like ghosts through his body. And it's like, what's going on? And then Riku's all like, embrace the darkness. And like fades away. And Sora ends up fighting against the darkness. And gets ejected to Traverse Town. Where apparently everyone whose worlds have been swallowed by the darkness ends up. Although it's mostly propagated by main Disney characters. Like Huey, Dewey, Louie, and Scrooge. And you know other big Disney characters. And Final Fantasy characters. Like Leon and Sid. Nerith and Yuffie. We all love Yuffie, right? Yeah. Well, he ends up meeting them, and while he's there, he ends up meeting Donald and Goofy, who their king has gone missing. Guess who their king is? It's Mickey! Well, Mickey left a little note with Pluto saying, I need to go do something. You guys need to find the Keyblade and help whoever is using the Keyblade to go through and defeat the darkness. Well, guess who has the Keyblade? Sora! So Donald and Goofy end up on Traverse Town's world, and find Sora, and that find like, yeah, no, we'll be friends now, and they go flying off their gummy ship, and they fight with each other a lot, mainly Sora and Donald, because they don't like each other, and they keep bringing it to Riku, and Riku's all like, you replace us so easily, you will, aren't the one to protect Kairi, only I can protect Kairi. Angst. And then they end up finding more and more interesting things, like they go to the games, and they see another Final Fantasy character, Cloud, who's currently trying to find Sephiroth, because Sephiroth owes him 30 bucks. Or something. It's never explained in the games. He's trying to find them. He killed his family! Well, during this time, Riku's still going around and he's now being guided by Maleficent, the person who's decided to control the Heartless, an evil witch. And she's like, ah, oh, yes, no, we'll do this. And we'll open Kingdom Hearts and gain unimaginable power. Because she's being led by a guy by the name of Ansem. Well, Sora ends up going to Hollow Bastion. The world that the Final Fantasy characters originally came from. And he ends up seeing Riku there again after meeting up with him a couple times and realizing Riku might not be going down the best path. Well, while he's there, Riku's all like, I'm now in control of the Keyblade and steals it from Sora. And Sora's like, what? And Donald Goofy like, well, we have to follow the Keyblade. Yeah, let's go. And then they end up going off behind Riku. And Sora's just sitting there like, what's going on? And Beast is there like, I need to find Bow. And Sora's like, well, I need to find my friends. And Beast goes, well, let's work together. And they end up going through and Sora's completely garbage. And the only reason he gets through is because Beast is there. And then Beast's like, Bow! and charges off. And he ends up going away. And Sora's like, oh, okay. And then he goes his own way. And he finds Donald and Goofy and Riku all standing around. And he's like, no, come back, guys. And he gets the keyblade back. And Goofy's all like, gosh, I always believed in you, Sora. And Donald's like, ah, that's not believing you. So he ends up going back to him. And then they're all together. And Riku's like, ah, angst, you took the keyblade back. Why? I was supposed to be that choice. I know why. So he runs off and he lets the darkness consume him. And he becomes controlled by Ansem. So they run into him again. And they learn that they were collecting the seven princesses of heart. And one of them was Kairi. However, Kairi doesn't have her heart for some reason. So they can't open Kingdom Hearts yet. So Sora and Riku battle. And then it turns out that Kairi's heart was in Sora all along. And the whole Sora poof, was her heart getting put into him. It was not Sora having a drug trip, sadly. Well, after he, after Riku stabs Sora and unlocks his heart, Sora goes bye-bye, Kairi wakes up, and Kingdom Hearts begins to open up because the seven princesses of heart are there. And then Kairi, Donald, and Goofy are like, oh no, we gotta get out of here. And Kairi's like, where is Sora? Sees Shadow on the ground. Sora! Hugs it. Everyone's like, what? What are you doing? with Shadow? And then it becomes Sora. It's like, what the f***? 
So then they end up going, okay, we have to go into Kingdom Hearts now. So they go into Kingdom Hearts, and they realize Riku's being controlled by this guy named Ansem, and he's the real guy of darkness. So we got to go beat up Ansem. So they beat up Ansem, and they end up realizing, oh, we need to close the door to darkness. How do we do that? And Mickey's like, oh, I'm here. Don't worry, guys. Me and Riku will stay on this side. Lock the door on us, and don't let us get out. So they lock the door. And Riku's like, wait, did we just get locked in here? And Sora's like, wait, did I just lock my friend in there? And the dog will be like, wait, did we just lock the king in there? No! So then they're like, well, at least we have Kairi here. And then Sora and Kairi drift apart because magical world separating thing, and Kairi's supposed to go back to her own world. And because Sora has a keyblade, he's supposed to stay in adventure, apparently. So they end up going off on their own. They're like, okay, we need to find a way into the king. And somehow, some way, Pluto keeps getting letters from the king, even though the king is in the realm of darkness. Pluto is an interdimensional being, apparently. Well, let's move forward a little bit to Chain of Memories, which happens just right after Kingdom Hearts 1. Well, Chain of Memories, they're on a world. It's a very nice world, and it's Sora, Donald, and Goofy. And they find this castle. Well, Sora finds the castle because a dark-robed guy's like, Hey, kid, want some free candy? And Sora's like, sure! And he follows him into this castle, and Donald and Goofy are like, Sora, don't follow him! Oh, no! And they're too late. They walk in, and they realize, huh... Something's going weird. Then Jiminy Cricket, basically your journal guy, is like, Oh my god, the journal's been completely erased. We completely lost our memories from the previous game. And everyone's like, what are you talking about? What previous game? What? And they realize they just lost their memories. So they go back through all their old memories, but everything's being twisted around. And so it's like, I must protect Kyramine. Namine, that's it. I must protect Namine. And suddenly Riku's there again in his shadow mode. And he's like, no, I'll protect Namine. I promise to protect her. And they go fighting. And then they realize, oh, wait, Namine's been erasing our memories. And that Riku isn't really Riku. It's a clone by, made by this guy named Vexen, who's part of this thing called Organization 13. And there are these weird dark hooded figures that are going around fighting us. And they end up basically destroying most of them. At least Sora destroys a couple of them. And the actual Riku goes through and destroys some of them in the lower levels. And then Repliku ends up getting his heart broken by Namine and dies. Yeah. Well, then Sora ends up realizing, okay, I should still protect Namine even though I have to protect Kairi. Because Namine is basically Kairi. Because she's her nobody. But we don't know that. Sora doesn't know that. Sora doesn't understand nobody's. Sora instead decides, I'm going to go fight Marluxia. And Marluxia's like, I'm too fabulous to be controlled. I'm starting a revolution against Xemnas. And then he goes, full on plant god. And it's like, okay, so um, I beat you. And then Marluxia's like, no, I've been beaten. And dies. And then Sora's like, oh no, my memory is so messed up from everything you're doing, Nomine. Can we fix that? And I'm just like, go in the pot. I'll fix everything. So he goes to the pot and he goes to sleep. Well, during this time, 358 slash two days is going on where we learned that when and Sora turned into a Heartless, his Nova was created, because when you get turned into Heartless and you have a strong enough heart, you get a nobody created from the leftover shell of your body. Well, his nobody looks suspiciously like Ventus, but ends up getting named Roxas. That name that I was trying to say earlier, who wasn't around yet. Well, Roxas is kind of dead inside. But he gets taught by the members of Organization 13 how to not be dead inside. And he goes around and he, starts, and he makes friends with this guy named Axel, who was a turncoat when it came to Marluxia's revolution, because he was a double agent. So it was like, Marluxia's like, you're on my side. He's like, yeah, I'm totally on your side. Xemnas, they're trying to start a revolution. Xemnas like, yeah, I know, just stop them and then come back. And he comes back and it's like, yay. But during this time, before Vexen gets off, he creates another clone person. This time it's something by the name of Xion, who's used creating the fragments of Sora's memories that Lamine took out. So Xion looks like whatever the person who's looking at them believes them to be. So to some people, she looks just like a person with a hood over her eyes. To other people, she looks like a puppet, apparently. And to Roxas, she looks like a dark-haired girl very similar to Kyrie. I wonder why. Well, they go through, and during this whole time, Roxas and Xion keep having this power struggle going on. Oh no, I have a lot of the Keyblade's power. Oh no, I have a lot of the Keyblade's power. I do, I do, I do. And everyone, whenever one has all the Keyblade power, the other one's basically missing it. So they have to work together a lot. And Xion ends up fighting Riku at one point, and because they end up learning, there's this guy impersonating us, wearing a cloak like us, and it's just Riku going around with the blindfold on, like, I can fight without seeing anything. Surprisingly, he doesn't run into walls. I believe he, use echo, he uses echolocation. Well, during this time, they start to realize, Xion starts to realize 
that the reason she's starting to get more and more power is because she's stealing memories from Sora, and that was the real plan with her all along. So she ends up confronting Roxas after about 350 days and says, kill me! And Roxas is like, no, you're my friend! And she's like, fight me! And she basically turns into Sora, then turns into like Mega Sora, and turns into like Mega Ultra Omega Sora, and starts fighting Roxas, and Roxas is like, no! And kills her, and she's all like, I'm dying, don't forget about me. He's like, I'll never forget about you! And she turns into Crystal, and he almost immediately forgets about her because apparently that was part of the power to steal the memories she had to also make herself into a memory and vanish well after this Roxas ends up entering his angsty teenage phase all of a sudden and he ends up going off he's all like uh I don't think anyone organization 13 will miss me they're just trying to use me and Axe is like no I'll miss you man and so but Roxas doesn't hear him and then walks out well, he ends up going to this giant skyscraper area, and Riku's there, and Riku's like, I need to take you in so we can get the rest of Sora's memories out of you to make Sora normal. He's like, fight me for them. And he summons Oath Keeper on Oblivion and starts dual wielding his f***ing keyblades and starts fighting off f***ing Riku. And Riku just ends up taking the Oblivion from him in a class, and they strike each other. And they're standing there, Riku's all like, I need to full, show my full power to be able to defeat you. I won't be able to turn back from this. Takes off his blindfold and becomes handsome again. But this time, he is in control. And he knocks Roxas out and takes Roxas and puts him into a computer simulation. Run by a guy who's calling himself Diz. Very subtle. Very subtle Disney reference there. You might have missed it. Well, now we're on to Kingdom Hearts 2. Where Roxas is currently in a simulation where he believes he has seven days left of summer vacation. And he's spending it with his friends, Hainer, Pence, and Olette. Well, they're actually real people, but in the simulation, they're just copies made to think of him as a friend. So he ends up going around with them, and the simulation starts to crumble as the nobodies start to work their way in. And Axel comes, he's like, come on back to the organization, Rox. And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about, and starts attacking him with keyblades. And he's like, no, I have to fight my friend. And they fight, and he ends up reaching the end of the simulation. And he realizes, I have to fade away so Roxas can wake up, and he fades away. And Axel is sad. Well, then Sora wakes up because Roxas is back to normal. Meaning that Roxas is f***ing gone. But now Sora's awake, and he's taller, because he's been in a coma for, I think, two years? Long enough for his shorts to become very short. Well, during this time, he ends up getting taken over to Yen Sid's tower. And Yen Sid is the old wizard who trained Mickey to become a Keyblade Master. And he goes over there with Donald and Goofy again. They're like, oh, yeah, gosh, we need to go talk to Yen Sid. He can fix things. And so he's like, oh, yeah, maybe I get some new clothes there, too. And the three fairy godmothers are like, sure, boom, new clothes. They have magic in them now, too. And he's like, sweet. And they talk to Yen Sid and they learn, oh, we need to go back to the other worlds and deal with their hearts again. And now there are nobodies going around and stuff is heartless. So you got to deal with that. And they see this guy by the name of Pete. Another main Disney character. And he ends up trying to attack them with Heartless. And they realize, oh, has he taken over the Heartless? So the Heartless will be a problem again. And Pete runs away in defeat after they basically kick his butt out. Well, Yen Sid kicks his butt out. And he ends up going back to Hollow Bastion to where Maleficent died. But she's not actually dead. She's back alive and controlling stuff again. So then Sora and the gang, they go to the Hollow Bastion too. And they meet up with everyone there. And now Tifa's there. And she's trying to find Cloud. And Cloud is still trying to find Sephiroth. And Sephiroth's trying to find an ATM. Because he still owes Cloud that 30 bucks. Well, then they go around to the other worlds and they realize, oh, all these nobodies around, they keep running to members of Organization 13. And some of them are like, you look very familiar. It's like, aren't you our pal? Don't you remember us? Yada, yada, yada. And Sora's like, I do not understand what you guys are saying. What is happening? Well, after all this is going on, you end up learning that Kyrie has remembered everything that happened because apparently she'd had amnesia too. And she ends up getting picked up by Axel from Organization 13 and kidnapped. And they end up getting taken around. And she tries to run away from him. And then another weird, white haired, very tan guy appears who looks very much like Ansem from the previous game. Comes, picks her up, and she's like, Oh no, what's going on? And he's like, I'm Riku. And she's like, What? And then they end up in the world that never was, which is the world of the nobodies. And while there, Sora ends up going through and he's like, oh wait, I've been killing these Heartless and that's just been releasing their hearts and helping open Kingdom Hearts again. Oh no! And Zemnus is like, Kingdom Hearts! Soon all nobodies will have hearts. And Sora's like, I won't let you do that. Are we the bad guys here? But then Sora ends up throwing away all of his morals and just rushes down to make sure nobodies can't get hearts. 
And during that time, Kairi and Riku are there. And then they end up bringing to Sora. And Riku ends up showing off that the fact that he's like, Oh, wait, no, I just needed you guys to help control the darkness in my heart and turn me back into normal. So he's back into normal. Everyone meets up. They're all happy. And then Sora fights Xemnas. And Xemnas is like, I now have a white and black cloak. And then Sora just kind of kicks his butt through tons of QTEs. It's cinematic enough. But now Xemnas is gone. And then we get to see the most wonderful game of all, Kingdom Hearts Coded, happens after this. Where Jimmy realizes, hmm, my old journal from the first game is still blank. Let's take it to the high-tech computer in the king's castle and try to fix this. So he takes it in, he puts it in, scans it, it somehow pulls the memories out and creates a digital sword with sentience. That probably wasn't the best idea. Well, he ends up going through all this, and the digital Sora has to finish the journal and realizes, oh, once I'm all done, I get deleted. And that's basically that game. But then you get to see that at the end of 2, uh, Diz was Ansem, which is actually technically before Recoded, but I forgot that. But Diz was Ansem, the real Ansem, not the fake Ansem. The fake Ansem is actually Xehanort. And Xehanort is going around possessing tons of people. And then you have Riku, Kairi, and Sora realize, okay, we have to help things out. Let's go over to Yen Sid's place again. And this time we have the king with us, because the king is out of there too now. So they're all there, and they're like, okay, so we got to put Riku and Sora under to do a Keyblade Master exam, because we can't do the regular Keyblade Master exam like was in Birth by Sleep. No, 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 no. We got to have them go into Dream Worlds and possibly risk coma by going in here. But don't worry, no one will fall into a coma. So then I'm going through dream worlds and like, ah, oh, yes, we must explore the darkness in our heart. And Riku comes out, he's like, yeah, I finished it. And he becomes a Keyblade Master. And he looks over to Sora and Sora's in a coma. Apparently, you can fall into a coma during this. So he's like, oh, no, Xehanort's trying to turn Sora into another vessel. So he ends up diving in and rescuing Sora with the help of everyone else. And apparently, Axel survived dying in Kingdom Hearts 2. And he's now back to being human because apparently nobody's had hearts. They just kind of needed the right circumstances to regain their human form. Oh. Well, during this, it lear we learned that Axel, now Lee, has a Keyblade too! And Kyrie can still use her Keyblade and everyone like rescues him out of there and they learn, okay, we're gonna follow this battle between the 13 Scions of Darkness, which is literally Organization 13, but it's not the 13 nobodies. No, it is 13 Xehanorts. 13 Xehanorts. Including Syax, who was once Lee's friend Issa, who's nobody, but he's technically still Syax because he's still the Dark One, but he might be Issa, we don't know. And there's also Brag, who's there, who is Zigbar, who's Brag, who's naming conventions, weird. But we learned that all these signs of darkness are supposed to fight against seven rays of light, and Sora manages to survive, and he's one of the rays of light. It's like, okay, we're good. And they're like, we need to collect all these Keyblade wheels. Make sure everyone's trained up for all this. So they end up going, okay, Kyrie, you're not trained yet. And Lee, you just got a Keyblade. We need to train you two now. So they end up getting training. And while this is going on, you realize, hmm, where's Aqua been? Meanwhile, we cut to Aqua in the Realm of Darkness. Why'd you guys leave me? Yes, he's been stuck there this entire time. And it's kind of gone a bit dark. She got norded, as the internet would say. Well, we also learned that they need to find Ventus, because he might be one of the signs of light that they need to help with this battle. And Ventus is starting to wake up a bit, it seems. But they still need to find him. And this is where we are at currently. Kyrie and Lee end up having to go train with Yen Sid. Sora did some training on his own and is getting ready to hopefully become a Keyblade Master. Riku is a Keyblade Master. Mickey is still Mickey. Yen Sid's still Yen Sid. Donald is still a horrible healer. Goofy is still Goofy. And we gotta fight 13 Xehanorts. This gotta be a beautiful game. Play it! Or watch someone play it. I don't control you.